Hello everyone, my name is Mahmoud al -Nabi. I'm from University of Calgary. In this presentation, I'm going to present our paper, FIDES, a system for verifiable computation using a smart contract. This is a joint work with Sepita Avicii and Rehane Safavanaini. Our sourcing computation enables weak clients with low computational power to outsource computationally intensive tasks to powerful but untrusted computational services. For example, clouds. Since the cloud server is untrusted, it raises a security concern that is the server may provide an arbitrary or incorrect result of the outsourced computation. Therefore, the question in outsourcing computation is how the client can efficiently verify that the computation was performed correctly. That efficiency means the client needs to do less work for computer verification and executing the computation by himself. In addition to the above security concern, the client may also refuse to pay after receiving the result from the cloud. Therefore, the security goal here is to ensure correctness of the computation, as well as ensuring the payment of the clouds for their work. Verifiable computation protocols provide solution to this problem that enable the client to verify the correctness of the result provided by the cloud. Also, to remove the trust assumption from the client, one may use a trusted third party who will manage the record interactions and payments. This has motivated us to explore protocols for verifiable outsourcing computation while finding a way to remove the need for a trusted third party. In this work, we focus on outsourcing computation schemes who considered malicious adversarial setting where the adversary may behave irrational and deviate from following the suggested protocol. There have been several approaches for verifiable outsourcing. Approaches using probabilistically checkable proofs has been proposed where the prover is assumed to be unbounded and the proof can be probabilistically verified by a computationally bounded verifier by querying a bounded number of bits in that proof. Now, PCVs have been used to construct efficient argument systems. Efficient uh, single server verifiable computation systems such as Peeper, Ginger, and Jather have been implemented using efficient argument system. Moreover, delegation of general computation using fully homomorphic encryption has also been proposed. Now, although this PCP or fully homomorphic encryption based systems guarantee high level of security, but they incur heavy computational cost for the server or require a heavy preparation step for the client, uh, which makes these uh, systems inflexible. Another approach is replication-based approach where the client delegates the same computational task to multiple servers and the result that is generated by majority of the servers is considered as the correct result, assuming majority of the servers are honest. Since the client is required to perform relatively small amount of work, this approach looks an inter interesting one. Now, Kennedy et al. presented a new replication-based model for delegation of computation between a client and two clouds with the assumption that at least one of the clouds is honest. Their model is called a referred delegation of computation. Uh, in addition, using a smart contract for managing our source computation through a referred game model has also been considered in systems such as TrueBit, uh, HB, that consider rational adversarial setting and use multiple servers to run the computation off chain. And they also use a smart contract that works as a referee. Our previous work in CCRR was also proposed, which is a smart contract based system considering malicious adversarial setting and adopt the referee delegation of computation model of Kennedy et al. However, implementation of SCCRR was left as future work. Now I briefly talk about CRR protocol of Kennedy et al. that introduces the referee delegation of computation model. A referee delegation of computation for a function f is a protocol between a problem giver and n sub or n, which where n is greater than or equal to two cloud servers, where at least one of the servers is assumed to be honest. The problem giver delegates the computation uh, and, a, and the input to the clouds. Each cloud computes an output y and returns it to the problem giver. If the results are same, then the result is considered as correct by the assumption that one of the clouds is honest. If the clouds claim different result, then the referee or the problem giver 
should be able to determine the malicious cloud with high probability. In this case, the problem giver engages in a challenge response protocol with each of the clouds to find inconsistencies between the intermediate states of the two clouds computation using a binary search approach. Once the disagreement point is identified, problem giver executes single step of the computation by itself and detect the malicious cloud. Now the advantage of this CRR protocol is that uh, is, uh, it provides provable, sec provable security for any efficiently computable function and guarantees correctness. However, it assumes that the client is untrusted and follows the protocol. In practice, clouds need to trust the client who works as a, a trusted third party for their promised payments for the computation. Now, CR assumes a Turing machine to describe the computation where the intermediate states of the computations are represented as reduced configurations. For example, given a Turing machine configuration consisting of a state, head, and tip, the reduced configuration is defined to be a tuple consisting of the state, head position, a value at the head location, and a Merkle root constructed on the tape contents. Since the root is used in the configuration instead of the whole tape contents, that's why it is a reduced configuration. Now, an array of reduced configuration consisting of the intermediate computation states is saved by each server during the protocol execution, which are later used for resolving any dispute between the server's results. Now, the trust on the client uh, as a referee is a major concern in CRR. Therefore, a blockchain-based solution can help to remove the need for trust assumption on the client in CRR. That's where Ethereum and smart contracts comes into play. Uh, Ethereum is a decentralized platform that supports smart contracts execution. A smart contract is like a computer program that specifies a set of instructions and functions which is stored by the Ethereum nodes. These functions are executed by all the nodes in the network when they are called by an Ethereum user or another smart contract via transactions. However, the number of instructions that can be executed by a smart contract are bounded by Ethereum's gas limit. One idea to overcome this Ethereum's gas limit issue is to perform off-chain computation and then use smart contracts at trusted third parties on blockchain. The goal, is to, um, goal of the smart contract is to ensure correctness of the computation result, minimize on-chain computation, and manage the interactions between the parties. Now, this has motivated the authors of SCCRR to use a smart contract as a trusted third party for, uh, for outsourcing while adapting the CRR protocol of Kennedy et al. Now, in SCCRR, a smart contract works as a referee between the client or the problem giver and the clouds in CRR protocol and allows the client to verify the result of the computation over blockchain. At a high level, it works as follows. The problem giver sends a request for the computation to the smart contract. Upon receiving the request, the smart contract instructs the clouds to perform the computation the clouds then return their result to the smart contract. Then the smart contract compares the result. If the results match, the result is considered as correct. Otherwise, the smart contract initiates uh, the malicious cloud identification protocol, which is same as CRR. They assume that uh, the client is untrusted. One of the clouds is malicious and the other is rational. However, uh, they noted that their direct implementation of CRR using smart contract will result in a new attack called copy attack that allows free riding to a dishonest cloud. A solution to the copy attack problem was also proposed using random beacon, where the smart contract sends two random queries to two servers for an item in the Merkle tree of that server. In response, the servers need to return a Merkle proof for the query index. Then a smart contract verifies the Merkle proofs and detect the copying party since the copying party won't be able to generate a valid proof. Although this is a good approach to catch the copy attacker, however, the implementation of this protocol was left as a future work. Now, in this work, we propose a new modified version of CRR that we call CMCRR or committed CRR 
that reduces the number of computation of the smart contract compared to SCCRR and implements a system FIDIS, which is a verifiable computation service that uses CMCRR as the underlying protocol over Ethereum blockchain. Our proposed CMCRR protocol is a smart contract based referee delegation of computation scheme that uses a smart contract as a referee, which interacts with a client C, two servers S1 and S2, and ensures correctness and detection of misbehaviors. Our protocol consists of three main phases, namely initialization, computation, and dispute resolution. During the initialization phase, at first, the client sends a transaction by calling the initialized function of the referee smart contract that contains the function to compute and a commitment to the input. Upon seeing the initialization transaction, the servers register themselves for the computation. Once both servers are registered, the client opens its commitment to the input by revealing the opening value dx. Both servers verify whether the opening of the commitment is correct or not. If true, they accept the computation job by sending an accept message to the smart contract. Otherwise, they abort. When the smart contract receives the accept message from both servers, it notifies the servers to start the computation. Both perform the computation and reveal the result in two steps. In the first step, they make a commitment to the result and they send the commitment to the smart contract along with the total number of intermediate computation states and a Merkle root consisting constructed on these intermediate computation steps. In the second step, once both commitments are received, each server reveals its result Y and the opening value for the commitment TY. There can be four possible scenarios while verifying the results by the smart contract. First of all, if both opening are valid and their results match, the result is considered as correct. Second, if one of the server's opening is invalid but their results match, smart contract ident identifies this server as copying server, other server results is correct. Third, if one of the server's opening is invalid but their results mismatch, Smart contract identifies this server as malicious server and the other server as honest. Finally, if both openings are valid and their results mismatch, a smart contract initiates the dispute resolution phase. The dispute resolution phase consists of two parts, binary search through which it identifies the point of disagreement between two parties and the single step execution uh, on Ethereum network to identify the malicious server. During the binary search stage, the smart contract asks each server to reveal hash of intermediate computation state for a specific index together with a Merkle proof. Smart contract checks if both server hashes match or not. If they match, a smart contract verifies both proofs. Now, there can be two scenarios. First, if both proofs are valid, there is no copy attack and a smart contract repeats the previous step again. That means ask servers to reveal hash of another index. Else, if one Merkle proof is invalid, the copy attack is identified by the server whose proof is invalid and a smart contract sends the result of the owner server to the client. Otherwise, if hashes mismatch, the smart contract calculates a new non-matching index and asks both servers to reveal their hashes for that index. Now, these challenge responses are continued for several rounds until two consecutive indices such as J and J plus 1 are found such that their responses match at index J but mismatch at index J plus 1. At this point, the smart contact performs a single step of the computation to determine the honest server or to identify the malicious server. A smart contracts ask one of the servers, for example, server one, to reveal the reduced configurations for the two consecutive computation steps, NG and NB in plane. The smart, then the smart contract performs single step execution from NG to NB and identifies the malicious server and returns the output of the owner server to the client. Now, security and privacy in uh, CMCRR. 
our protocol ensures that the following security requirements are fulfilled. Correctness uh, means the client always receives the correct result in, if the honest server runs the computation. Soundness, the malicious, the malicious server will be detected and the current computation will not be affected. Now, soundness also includes copy detection where a dishonest server can try to copy a attack in two situations. First, copy the final result in computation states. And second, copy during the binary states of dispute resolution. Now, CMCR protocol ensures that the copy attacker will be detected in both of these cases using commitment on the result and using Merkle hash root on reduced configuration array. We also prove security against copy attack and correctness of the computation result by effectively reducing them to the collision resistance property of the hash function that is used in the Merkle tree and the security of the commitment scheme. In addition, CMCR scheme also ensures input privacy from public eyes by not revealing them on blockchain. Now we have performed a proof of concept implementation of our proposed CMCR protocol and we call our system FIDIS. FIDIS works directly with EVM instructions following the Ethereum execution model. Now there are three main actors in FIDIS system. The client who outsources the computation to servers who executes the outsourced computation and returns the result, and the referee who moderates the verification protocol. Now, we have made several design choices for our implementation. In our protocol at the end of the dispute resolution phase, we require that single step of the computation must be performed the referee contract on Ethereum network. Since Ethereum network only understands codes that are written in EVM bytecode format, a significant challenge of our implementation was specifying the single step computation in EVM compatible format and delegating, then delegating the execution of that step to the referee smart contract so that it can produce the same result at the honest server. To overcome this issue, we made two design choices. First, we restrict ourselves to solidity language for writing the delegated program whose compiled binaries are equivalent to EVM bytecode. And secondly, we require each server to run the computation inside their private Ethereum virtual machine, which is not part of Ethereum network. We also require that each execution of the delegated program should be deterministic. To ensure deterministic program execution, we assume that the input to the delegated program is hard coded. That is, it is part of the program itself. Also, if uh, function f is a random function, the client can hard code an initial random seed in the delegated program and use a pseudo random number generator within the program to generate the required randomness. This can guarantee that both servers will generate and use the same randomness. Additionally, we note that the program should not use any instructions that requires the program to interact with outside of the current and local EVM execution environment. Now, uh, from this table of EVM instructions, the red uh, marked boxes, uh, these are the instructions that should not be included in the program. For example, the environment information operations such as EXT code size and external code copy that can get external account size and code uh, respectively during the execution should be excluded from the delegated program. Now this figure shows the overview of our FIDIS system that consists of three main modules, FIDIS client that represents the client functionalities, FIDIS server that implements the server functionalities such as receiving EVM executable from client, run it in their private EVM, communicating with the smart contract, et cetera, and refer a smart contract that is deployed on the Ethereum network and implements the verification protocol. We assume that there is a secure channel between each server and client. Also, smart contracts communication with client and servers happens over per public channel. That is transactions sent and received by the referee and the result of the contract function executions are posted on the blockchain that are publicly visible. We have developed a wrapper program inside the FIDIS server functionalities that generates state files for each computation step 
and stores them in the server's storage. This allows the servers to provide the required information during the uh, dispute resolution phase to the smart contract without the need for any extra processing. In addition, Web UI, uh, which is a local HTML file, is developed for each FIDE server and the client that runs JavaScript uh, code to load the data from the storage and uses Web3.js library for interacting with the smart contract. We have used Solidity to write the smart contracts and Ganache uh, is used to simulate the public Ethereum blockchain environment as well as to simulate the EVM on local computers uh, for uh, servers. Now to show the practicality of our verification protocol, we conducted several experiments with FIDIS prototype to evaluate the execution cost of each server in terms of running time and the financial cost of the verification by the reference smart contract on Ethereum network. As a concrete example, uh, we considered multiplication of two matrices. Now the left side of this table shows the program execution cost in time inside EVM by each server for different matrix sizes. The right side of this table outlines the transaction execution cost in gas for calling referee contracts functions for matrix size 10. The total cost is converted into US dollar that represents only the total cost of executing the referee contract on Ethereum network. For honest execution, which is scenario one here in table, uh, in this right side, uh, the main cost is the program execution time of the servers and the financial cost of verifying the results by the smart contract. For non-matching result, which represents scenario two, financial cost grows with the size of the computation steps and rounds of binary search stage. This cost can be charged to the malicious server to disincentivize dishonest behavior. In summary, the results in this table demonstrate that, uh, demonstrate that uh, FIDIS requires reasonable program execution time by the servers and the financial cost of verification on Ethereum network is minimal. In conclusion, uh, SCRDOC offers an attractive model for verifiable computation that minimizes trust on the client and servers by delegating the referee task to a smart contract. In this work, we propose CMCRR protocol, which protects against copy attack and misbehavior of client and proves its security. We gave an overview of our proposed system FIDIS, which is the first implementation of SC aided RDOC. We discussed challenges of our implementation and how we overcome those challenges. For future work, our work can be extended to multiple server uh, SCRTOC. Uh, interesting open questions are to provide a formal security model that can capture copy attack and uh, to allow servers to perform their computation in a commonly used architecture such as x86 while using the smart contract for verifying a single computation state. Thank you, Avian, uh, for your patience. Uh, if you have uh, questions or if you want more information, please contact us.